Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Steam Next Fest 2022, uh, where today we're checking out the demo for Meet Me at Noon. Uh, this is a puzzle game that has a core mechanic that's quite unlike anything I think I've ever seen before. Uh, I only played a little bit into this, so it's possible that I'm going to embarrass myself by being unable to solve puzzles very quickly, but this is really cool. I really, really want to show this off. So, here's the deal with Meet Me at Noon. You know, it's one of those. You get it, right? Uh, yeah, I think it feels like it would be a good idea to have a look at some tips. There are two symbols located in the level, a sun and a moon. To solve the levels, you need to have the two characters on their corresponding symbol at the same time. You control two characters, one during the day and the other during the night. The active character is the one with their face visible. All the moves you do with a character are recorded and will be played back while you're controlling the other character. It's like you create small time loops for each character. I think this is kind of an unintuitive way to describe it, but I think that's probably... I have a very particular history that leads to me thinking of this in a different way. Uh, the playback for each character is different. The Sun character will rewind all of its moves during his playback. The Moon character will come back to its original position and replay all of its moves during its playback. Play them forward, it means. So with the timeline, you can see how many moves you have in total to solve the level. If you make a mistake, we can jump around the timeline, yeah. So I don't think that explanation's super great. You'll see here what we're talking about. What we're essentially doing is programming. We're, we're setting up a, uh, a movement program for this character. So we've picked up a star. We've touched the thing. There you go. The stars are, you know, optional collectibles for, for nerds. <laughs> <laughs> for the puzzle game nerds. What if you could solve the puzzle, but even more so? So it's shown us the sun character. Here we have the moon character. And I really like this touch that you can see, like, the fluid inside of them draining out as they get closer to being out of allowed moves. So you can see on the timeline, if we step back here, the star is not grabbable right now. The star is only grabbable on segments of the timeline that have the little star icon. Fortunately, pretty trivial for us to get there at the appointed moment. All right, so here's the first real puzzle. We have a movement program that has both of the characters on it. We're gonna get to execute two moves. So we're gonna go right, right, so that we have touched this thing. And now remember, the orange character is going to play its moves backwards. So we're going to press left. It's going to move back up to here. And then we're going to press left again. And the orange character will be on the sun while the blue character is on the moon. And that's a victory. That's, that's how winning is done. I think thinking of it as creating time loops, I don't know. It seems a lot less intuitive to me than thinking of it as programming. But I, you know... I guess there's a good reason for that. That's probably not anything that's the developer's fault. So, foreseeing. Here's our star, here's our sun. Uh, so, remember that the sun characters, the, the yellow characters' moves are gonna be played backwards. So, if we stand here right now on the second command and then go get our star. The orange character will just back up all of their moves. And there we go. I do find it um, challenging. I, it's a little unintuitive. And I don't mean that as a criticism. I mean that as... So it's... That's why I'm going to do a bad job of solving these. I'm, I'm making an excuse. Uh, so... Let's set that up again. Touch the sun as early as possible. And then we're going to step off the ledge here. Because once we're in this part of the timeline, that star is going to appear. And as the orange character's moves play backwards, it's going to cause the orange character to touch this, right? Okay, there we go. It's, 
it's really unusual, right? I don't, I cannot think of anything that I've played before that is even kind of like this. Okay, statues. So you're just sitting on the sun right now, I think is what, what this means. So can I tap? Okay, we can't do up. Okay, but tapping down is just a wait command. Oh, easy enough. Game is just teaching us about the existence of the wait command. Okay. Hold on, I already regret what I've just done. Uh, step us back. This is probably one of those things where I want to touch the sun at the beginning of Orange's time again, so that it'll happen at the end of Blue's time, right? And I just stay here? I'm assuming that we have collision. Yeah, okay. Because the thing is, I'm pretty sure, let's um rewind here just to test. Yeah, I definitely cannot move while I'm in the air. Pressing up causes you to go up and be there for the end of the cycle, and then just fall at the beginning of the next cycle, so... Apparently falls are going to be very problematic. Yeah, see, this is bad. Alright, will this work the way we want it to? So we go here, we jump, and we jump. Ah, okay. We're gonna go back. Our last command is gonna just be down. Alright, so now blue can step to the right, which will cause orange to play the up command back. We do this, grab you. Okay. There we go. We're getting it. Oops. Okay, I think I see. So the deal is we're going to have to push orange with blue. Does that work? It does, but it doesn't get us the star. Hmm. How do we get the star? I'm just going to press down with our final command. No, okay. The problem with this is I'm not executing the push until, yeah, hmm. How do we get that? We need it to be the case that blue pushes Because if I don't press left, I'm not going to end up down here. And I do, orange does need to be down here. I don't know. We're going to not worry about it for right now. So it plays the commands backwards. Yeah, you know what? For right now, we'll just not get the star on that level. Okay, so you do have to get at least some stars for progression purposes. What did these... Okay, these are the... Those are the level groupings. I just had not noticed that we started on that one. Listen, it's not like you need to pay attention to the things that are on the screen during a puzzle game or anything. That's a ridiculous idea. Okay, so we need to come over here and serve as a bridge. Okay, that one was pretty straightforward. It's gonna bother me that they're uneven. Every single time we see that screen, it's like it's taunting me. All right, so remember, Orange's commands are gonna play in reverse. So let's touch this first, then come over here. And then as blue, we press right, and then Orange is gonna move to the right and carry us. 
So now I just want to press down so that orange carries us to the side again. Yeah, and then we... Because if I had pressed right there, I would have just stepped off of orange and then I would have been blocking orange. Preventing him from getting back to the sun. Hmm. So I need to go up, down, down, because it's going to play backwards, right? So we want to go left and have orange do nothing, left and have orange jump, and yeah, that all. I'm going to have to keep like straightening it out in my head, because like I said, I do not, I do not find it terribly intuitive. It's like, honestly, it's really exciting, though, how how weird it is. I play a lot of puzzle games, as you know, if you've been around the channel for very long. So it's really exciting to find one that feels so totally unlike the things I'm used to playing. So here I just want to hit down. Here I just want to hit down again, because then I can step off and yeah. So I'm assuming there will be levels where there's actually both an orange and a blue star. Right now we're just getting one star and then it's, you know, it's crediting us the other one for free. Okay, so you... I mean, what we want to do here is... what it's like jump down down because blue needs to have time to get over here before the jump happens so that we can be in position when the star appears yeah the physics implications of the backwards movement are <laughs> are weird weird and very cool So, how, wait, how do we... I'm going to need orange to provide a lift. Okay, so reverse order. What orange is going to have to do from blue's perspective is be here, carry blue to here, jump so blue can get on that, fall back down, walk over to here, jump again so blue can be on that, and then get back to the sun but also on the third and only on the third uh, step of blue's timeline the star appears and it will not be convenient to be in that position at that time how do we reconcile those okay so I'm in this position on the third step. No, sorry, these play backwards. What am I doing? I don't actually... I don't actually know how we would get that. Oh, shoot, I need you to jump twice. Oh, but then, hold on, this plan's not going to work at all because then I have a, um... The wait step is a problem because we won't have enough movement. We, we don't have enough, um... Processor cycles, effectively, to get where we're going. So... This jump has to be on that cycle. And then if I jump, okay, there we go. That's how you can, that's how you can time that. 
I'm glad I just went for it because I would not have thought of that, but seeing the moment before it, it was it was relatively obvious. Sometimes it's helpful not to have a plan, you know? Uh, okay, so the the star's not going anywhere. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's got to be the blue ones pushing the orange one in the optimal version of this. But how is that going to work? Hold on. Let me, let me just play here. So if I, well, I'm gonna wiggle back and forth. A blue drop down here, push you. It's almost enough of a push. So, okay, if we go right, Trying to keep it straight in my head. When we play this backwards. Okay, so we get to push you. Shoot, right. I have to push orange and then orange has to move right twice more than they did there. But how is that going to... It's a lot easier if we don't get the star, isn't it? <laughs> One, two, three, four. Yeah, how do we do this with orange? Cause like it's it's trivial for blue to fall down, grab the star and go to here. But it's actually very difficult to get orange to go there. So you're gonna execute your moves backwards. If we make the first move a, a, yeah, if we make the first move a left, which was which is what would be required for the last movement at the end to be a right, then we get the orange guy. Okay, left, right, right, right. You come down here and push, push to there. Okay, yeah, because the last movement was a left, played backwards, it'll be a right. My brain may not be exactly wired for this. A new direction. Can I push blue as orange? No, I cannot. So what? One, two, three, four, five. This actually looks remarkably... I was about to say it looks remarkably easy because I forgot again that Orange's moves play backwards. <laughs> All right, so what's gonna happen here, the easy version of this is when we start playing as blue, we push left, which drops orange to here. Then orange plays a left move, which means that the orange's last move needs to be a right press. Here's a here's a question. Two, three, four. So we press right a bunch. If I push you here, yes, that does work. We push right right a bunch so that the uh, the playback command would be filled with lefts. You just have to you have to imagine it in the space. It's it's tricky. Okay. Uh So we need it we need this body to go right right. 
So what we want right now is a left left. The reason this gap is here is so that we can put an up command in, which causes me to jump up on top of blue. And then Can I adjust the timing to get the star? Left, left, up, right, right, right is totally a solution. However, how do I be, how do I have orange here on the second panel of Blue's Play? Because like this part's actually necessary, right? This will cause you not to go anywhere. No, I need you to have... I need your move there to be a left somehow? Is there a different version of this? Hold on. If we go... I mean, it does really feel like... It does really feel like left, left, up is a requirement, but I feel like if I do left, left, up, we're not, we're just, we just can't get the star. As far as I can tell. So pressing up, yeah, pressing up in a place where you can't jump doesn't pass the time. It does, and more importantly, it doesn't commit an up to your programming queue. So... I guess we can time the events slightly differently. Right, because we don't actually have to position orange very much. Blue is able to push orange quite a bit here. So we need the second to last move. The second to last move on orange's queue has to be a left so that orange moves right during blue too. But we do have to still work a jump in there somewhere. Pretty close to the beginning, ideally. I don't, that's not gonna work, right? The jump is, yeah, the jump's in a place where I'm not actually getting the. <sighs> and the thing is, after blue lifts us up, we do have to move to the right two squares. I don't know. Let's not stress too much about the star. We have a functional solution. Let's just go ahead and use it. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't see it. A thing that is frustrating about, um, about doing puzzle games in this way is I know there are people who did see it. I know that some of you out there figured out how to get the star and I feel bad being I feel bad like frustrating the audience you know all right so blue blue star is just completion yellow star is I guess I kind of assumed they would be two different like two different collectibles because they're the colors of the two characters but yeah blue star is just completion orange star is get the extra thing all right a new dawn Oh, interesting. Oh, 
Okay, complicating the timeline somewhat. I am so into this. This this is so good. Uh, so what happens if I press left in this? Okay, that's a that's a breakage. Well, then the only things I can do are just press down, right? Wait, wait, wait. Down, up, down. Because we need to we need to leave one space for the orange character to be able to move over. There we go. If we had done up on the blue character's second move, they would have just been hanging there in the air, preventing the orange character from moving right. Okay, well, this is... I can't actually move right, so I may as well go get the star. And orange is going to be here, right? So this is another case where I need to wait a beat, then jump. These ones are pretty straightforward so far. Huh. How do we... Okay, so the orange character ends up wherever they end, wherever they end up when their movement is played back. They do not just necessarily go back to their initial position, which is a weird assumption I had made uh, based on nothing, really. Okay, so that thing is going to be there the entire time. So I'm going to pause and then press right. Oh, interesting. I was really not expecting the blue body to just hang in the air like that. Right, so now we can do this. Okay, let's restart. Because we're going to have to do it that way, right? We're going to have to... So you're going to rewind. So we're going to do like left, right. Then we're going to have blue fall left, absorb that move, push you to this side. You can grab that. Allows me to move. Oh! Okay. So hold on. You need to fall off the other side then. I did not realize blue would just completely annihilate orange. But we have a problem now. Oh no, that's right. Orange will complete the second move before blue starts the second move. They take turns, they don't act simultaneously. So if we had not completed the puzzle by making Orange's move, then blue would have moved off of the moon there and ruined everything. And I like phrasing it that way because that makes it sound like it's blue's fault, not my fault. Well, I guess Orange doesn't have to grab that. That's not important at all. Form a wall here. Uh, 
Oh, never mind. The star is actually only extant for the first three moves. That absolutely does matter. But we can still restrict Orange's movement. I can't really do that, though, can I? There we go. We just had to stand still and consume two of those presses. So from a physics perspective, blue is like a terrifyingly unstoppable object. It's just maximum force. Poor orange is so fragile. All right, so blue just walks across and then But blue's not going to repeat positions, right? Blue's going to repeat the commands. No, okay, blue does, in fact, just repeat positions. Okay, I feel like we're, we're blazing through this one. So, if orange is playing in reverse... This is so weird and so cool. Uh, and I guess here comes our here comes our annual miss the collectible puzzle. So the star is only present during Orange's second go. So if I press left right now, Orange won't be able to get back up the stairs. Okay. Hey, I actually did it. Question marks. Listen, time loops is a totally reasonable way to conceptualize this. That is so cool. I think that is so cool. Uh, this, okay, there we go. All right, well. That was a hell of a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed that. All right, that was Meet Me at Noon. This game is cool. I am very excited for the, for the final release of this. Uh, that's going to be it for us for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. When y'all come back next time tomorrow, we're gonna keep checking out new demos. I'm trying my best to like get some variety in here, but also only show off things that I think are like really the top tier quality. And I honestly don't know what's coming up next uh, yet. So come back tomorrow to find out and we'll see you then.